The American Basketball Association is the largest pro league in the world. Some great opportunities for team ownership are available and the cost may surprise you. If you've ever thought about team ownership in a pro league, give us the opportunity to help make it a reality. Reach out to us for more info. For US A-teams at www.abaliveaction.com. In Australia, go to www.abaleagueaustralia.com. gentlemen and everybody on the outside and in between i am vanessa hunley aka dj audio prism and i am here with yet another installment of music for water and the winners of the 2020 jb dondolo music for water competition and here today i have with me sydney cope she comes to us directly from Dallas, Texas, right here in the U.S. of A. So, Sydney, thank you so much for joining me here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Uh, likewise. Well, I've had a chance to listen to your song many, many times. Um, but I know that you've been doing music for a while before you even got anywhere close to this competition. So, of course, I'd like everybody to know a little bit about your musical background and how it inspired you to get to the point where you took the step of becoming a recording artist. Yeah, for sure. So I actually, um, I kind of started my adventure with dance, actually, whenever I was about two. And that kind of opened my eyes up, obviously, to music and hearing everything that goes along with that. And um, then I kind of got into music, actually, just out of curiosity, whenever I was seven, um, with some friends, I was like, yeah, sure. And I wrote like a little song uh, for like a sleepover that we had. And showed it to my mom and my mom was like well maybe we'll put her in some like little voice lessons or something so yeah. I started little vocal lessons here in my little town and um and kind of just over time developed into something a little bit more and then I wrote my first original song when I was in sixth grade I think um and then it, from there it just kind of boosted into something a lot more and I'm here I'm about to actually um drop an EP at the, at the beginning of July so <sighs> That is crazy so how exciting. time <laughs> I know I know so it's exciting I'm just here for the here for the ride to be honest <laughs> well um so the EP that you're working on what is it uh, more of a concept album or is it kind of individual songs or how did you go about putting your selection of songs together for that yeah, so this EP that's coming out is actually my first EP that I've ever released. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I wrote the songs um, over quarantine last year. So <laughs> it's kind of a lot more vulnerable because, you know, last year was not an easy year for everybody. And no. um, lots of emotions to deal with and lots of time at home to think. So I was able to put my thoughts into a song and I hope that people can relate to it, you know, over the craziness that 2020 brought. But overall, I'm just really excited to get it out there for people to listen to. So. Well, I'm sure we're all going to be really excited to hear. And I, there's going to be a lot to identify in with that. Uh, so this is your first EP. So this is your first official recording. Where have people uh, found your music up until now? Have you been mostly YouTube? Are you more SoundCloud? Or how did you go about growing the base to the point where you were ready to record an album for them? Well, I actually, over time, I've kind of been releasing singles every now and then. So I do mm -hmm. have some songs already out on pretty much most platforms on Apple Music, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube. You name it, it's probably there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this is my first kind of little mini album that I'll be putting out there with songs that kind of intertwine with one another. So it's going to be cool. I'm excited. And I actually just finished um, directing two music videos. One is for another song that will be coming out later this year, but one is for a song that's on the EP. So I'm excited. It's turning out pretty cool and things are starting to line up. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited. The visual medium is such a big part of music these days. And yeah. it's almost like uh, a 
just having that extra visual element can really help people identify with your message or sometimes it just outright terribly confuses them. I'm not going to lie. Video- right. Yeah. As a DJ. So there's some videos that I'm like, ah, uh, it's a concept. <laughs> <laughs> it's a right. Thing. And I'll remember it. <laughs> you know? That's right. Right. Might not know exactly what the meaning was, but at least you remembered it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, just anything better than a generic, you know, people pumping their fists in the air video, you know, right, like after right. a while, it's like, okay, I think, I think I've seen that crowd before. Maybe that guy in that t-shirt. <laughs> right. So how yeah. did your adventures lead you to music for water? Because that is one of those things that it, it, it's a global competition. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, obviously going to come across your radar somehow, but yeah. was it? something that somebody specifically presented to you or is it something you found on your own? So I actually had worked with Lumbi before she hosted um, an equanimity awards gala. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think I had met her at another event um, prior. It was kind of like this nonprofit event. And I just came and I sang like two songs maybe with my guitar, I think. And um, she had been there. And so we connected through that and she had reached out afterwards and asked me if I wanted to be a special guest performer at the Equanimity Awards Gala that she was hosting. And I was like, yeah, sure. That'd be fun. And so I did it one year and then I got invited back for the following year. And, um, so she, she just, I mean, we've always kind of kept up with each other through social media, you know, and from that event. And so when this music for water was happening and it was coming up and about Lumbi had reached out to me and was like, Hey, this is kind of what's going on. What we're about. If you're interested, please like, don't be afraid to submit a song and see what happens. Would love to hear like back from you. And I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. I loved what the whole meaning behind everything was. And, um, I love Lumbi. She's a sweet, sweetheart. And I would love to just help with anything that I possibly could. So, um, yeah, that's kind of how I, that's how I came across it. <laughs> well, you know, it's a lot of it's who, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it obviously speaks how much she's thought of your talent. One that you were at the equanimity or, uh, equanimity awards. Oof, oof, that's one to say out loud. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I know three times fast right now. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, but that, you know, she thought of you for the competition because, uh, you know, Music for Water is a very new endeavor, you know, in, in the realms of nonprofit. And they were really just getting started as well as the pandemic was starting is when they were starting the efforts and all of a sudden. But uh, but they carried on with their efforts throughout it. Mm-hmm. And last year's recipients was the Navajo Nation in Arizona, where they actually uh, took and set up a water treatment facility so it's not just you know them dumping off a pallet of water it's that right. we're going to help create a hmm. sustainable water source for this impoverished community and uh, they have goals to reach out to communities all over the world and help with this very very serious need um, hmm. that we're only going to see growing in the coming years with music yes. and water Yes, which is so exciting. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, to be part of that, to sit there and say, you know, in some tiny little way, you know, you get to be part of this effort that impacts Mm -hmm. thousands or maybe even millions of lives. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So your song is called Underwater. And I've, like I said earlier, I listened to it a few times, (laughs) but I want to hear you talk about it to uh, how you felt the inspiration of it. Does it like dip me underwater? That's where I feel my peace. That's where I feel my you know, it's almost like shutting out the noise of the outside world Mm -hmm. is kind of how I came away with it. So yeah, no, exactly. You're right on track with kind of the idea of it. Um, well this song actually, it's kind of funny. So, um, I actually kind of came up with the course, like the punchline of it in a hot tub because (laughs) I was in my backyard and we have a pool and I was just kind of out there by myself and I was in the hot tub and I was laying down and not laying down. I was sitting down and I laid my head back and I put my head up and my ears were underwater and Mm -hmm. I was just kind of listening. There was nothing. And then I came up and I heard and I kind of would go under back and forth. And I was like, it's so much more peaceful to hear like nothing. It's kind of just calming. It's nice little like kind of getaway. So I kind of use that metaphorically in the song to um, kind of portray like, okay, there's a lot happening in this world. You know, you can kind of get overwhelming at some times and um, sometimes you just kind of need to take that moment and enjoy that peace and quiet and just refresh yourself until you can go back out and handle everything again, you know? So that's kind of where that inspiration kind of came from. <laughs> well, you know, it's, 
something that I think we talk about so much more than we used to is doing nothing doesn't mean you're doing nothing. Sometimes right. doing nothing means you're giving yourself time to heal or recover or process right. or think mm-hmm. and, and, um, you know, doing nothing can be productive in yes. some ways. And, um, we, you know, we, as Americans, hey, you know, we're highly programmed to have this go, go, go. You never stop. 90 hours a week is something to be proud of, you know, kind oh, of. Yes. <laughs> um, but I think this last year has kind of helped reset some of those expectations of self, you know, and um, and this song kind of really reflects that idea mm-hmm. of trying to take more time for yourself. So I really, really feel that message. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I like hearing everyone's feedback on it because, you know, when writing a song, I go in with my perspective and kind of my feelings towards it. But mm-hmm. I'm very um, cautious about how other people, you know, interact with the song or how they relate to it. So that's good to hear. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. You're uh, th- well, Underwater in particular is a, it, it, it's a very pop song. Um, it's very melodic. It's got uh, you know, some kind of mysterious sort of undertones, which is, you know, kind of the feeling you get when you're sitting almost underwater and you're watching the light come through the water. Mm-hmm. It's got just like that kind of wavy feeling to it. Yeah. Um, the overall tone of your music, how, what sounds and instruments or uh, arrangements tend to kind of draw your attention when you're composing or putting together music? Yeah. So I guess it just kind of depends because, um, like I said before, most of the songs that I have out are all singles Mm -hmm. and they all kind of are very different in a way. I mean, obviously my voice kind of sounds the same because it's my singing voice. Um, but as far as whenever I write a song, I go in to each song very differently because it Mm -hmm. just kind of depends on the mood, you know, or what my goal is towards the end of the song. Um, so I think just kind of how my basic demo comes because normally I start writing my songs with either a guitar or a piano, um, and I'll come up with the melody and then I'll see how that makes me feel or kind of where I'm wanting to go. And then I'll go with lyrics from there. So, It kind of really just depends, Um, but I try to have an overall deep meaning behind all my songs or a message in um, relation to the song. So it kind of just depends, to be honest. (laughs) Well, yeah, to dip into the videos a little bit then, when you were doing your first music videos, how did you collaborate or come up with the imagery that you used to go with the song for it? Yeah. So, um, well, I think what's kind of helped me with that too, is I, um, when I was about 12 years old, I think I actually dive or got to get into acting as well. So, um, I've kind of been doing, trying to balance all three dance music and acting, and it's been such an adventure and, um, it's actually leading me to, I'm going to be starting school this August at the art Institute of Dallas. And so I'll be studying to get my um, bachelor's of fine arts for digital filmmaking and video production which will kind of tackle more of you know the f- film stuff and more behind the scenes that I'm kind of diving into and um, I think just having my eyes exposed to acting from a young age just has always led me so curious about what else I can do in this type of industry so now that I kind of have control over my music and I have just kind of been trying to branch out as to what I can do not only to help promote the song too but also that's entertaining for me and what else my creative abilities can you know mess around with so um but sorry, I'm feel like I'm rambling on. <laughs> no, it's passion. Passion is a good thing, by all means. Yes, yes. You know, and passion is part of the process. It's just you know, yes. It's okay, well, this you know, and, and yes, I, when you can branch out as an artist, it's a really, really useful thing to do. Mm-hmm. In the terms of, you get to create more of your whole vision you know you get to just add more of it it's like oh if they could only see this but wait they can you know right yeah there's not a lot of barriers now I mean everything that Mm -hmm. we've talked about it used to be really expensive to get into yes Um, and not as easy access now that media is all around us and technology I mean anybody can kind of get into it so yeah if you're you're into it go for it (laughs) yeah yeah exactly so 
So you've got the EP coming out. Mm -hmm. What is the name of the EP that we should be looking for? The EP is called The Sounds. It will be released July 10th. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. I have a music video coming out for one of the songs that I directed um, probably about a week or two after my EP release. Um, I guess it just kind of depends on where we'll be at the time, you know, with um, post-production and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I have that coming out July 10th. Yeah, we've talked about you streaming it. Where could people, where can they, you know, find you to stream or to get your music or just to follow your latest posts? What is your favorite, what are your favorite platforms that you like people to find you on? Yeah. So like I said, I'm on pretty much most music platforms, Spotify, mm -hmm. Apple Music, just Sydney Cope pretty generic you should be able to find it um and I'm mainly active on my Instagram which is just sydney.cope because I made an old account that was Sydney Cope and I lost access to that when I was about eight years old so <laughs> <laughs> don't know that one <laughs> that was <season> <laughs> um yeah I'm also on YouTube and I have a website Sydney Cope official you guys can check it out and if you actually go to the website all my social medias are on there so if you just want to go to one generic place and then branch out from there citycopeofficial.com is where you can check it out um but yeah that's that's kind of where you can find me <laughs> Well, you know, I always say when it comes to your favorite artist of any kind, really their website is the hub. That is where you go to find everything else, especially when they're very diverse artists, because, yes. you know, as you grow your catalogs of things, eventually you're going to have, oh, I have a page for this, and then I have a page for this, and I got a page for that. Right, right. <laughs> So, well, Sydney, I'm going to go ahead and say thank you so much for joining me today. I'm very excited to listen to the new EP. Tell us the name of it again one more time. The sounds. The sounds. So that's Drop in the, July 10th. <laughs> there you go, guys. And if you want to get a quick preview of things, follow her, follow her, follow her. And you can watch her stream from her show on July 9th. So there yeah. you go. All right, Sydney, you have a wonderful rest of your time. And we're going to look forward to all the great music we get to hear from you soon. Sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye.